Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. He has a podcast with us. He already is a, uh, he's part of our podcast community. He does multiple podcasts and he has so much to give to this community. He is a medium and his name is Christopher Stilson. And he works with people and he helps to have people connect with their loved ones. And he's very connected with the spiritual world and he has a lot to offer and a lot to teach. Today, we're going to talk about human luck. And Christopher has a lot to share about that and a lot of great information and insights. So Christopher, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do and tell them a little bit, you know, about human luck, because I'm really interested to learn more about it. Yes. Yeah, so I'm Christopher Silson. I'm a renowned psychic medium, a spiritual teacher, a transformational leader, a international bestselling uh, author, a diamond feng shui consultant, and an energy therapist. So I do multiple things. I love what I do. I love communicating with spirit and helping people transform their lives, but I get bored easily. That's why I have so much that it kind of gets added on. So anything I can do to help somebody, I will connect with. and I love it. Um, and uh, I've been doing readings pretty much my whole entire life. I started off, um, you know, uh, at 16 is when I started actually giving readings. And I continued and I started doing readings probably full time now for about eight years. So um, I've been kind of pushing and, gr and growing and thriving and whatnot and all that. Um, but we are talking about human luck today. And human luck is 33.3 percent of your manifesting if you guys haven't checked out the um past podcast we did talk about earth luck um before and a uh, little bit of heaven luck as well which we'll talk about and talk and discuss a little bit more down the line with that um but each luck um because there's three spiritual lucks that you're born with and each luck is 33.3 percent of your manifesting so there is of course the heaven human and earth luck when you work on all three of those, you are working on 99.9% .9 of your manifesting and creating the life that you truly want and desire, which I absolutely love. And I think that everyone, everyone should, you know, everyone should try to create the life that they want. It's um, obviously the world can be entertaining, I should say, <laughs> but, <laughs> but at the same time, we have to realize that it is all about what lessons we're learning and what to do to move on and move forward. Um, so with heaven luck or, or human luck, sorry, human luck is 33.3% of your manifesting, like I said. And human luck is all about our mindset, our attitude, and everything that we can create in a higher vibration. What I find interesting, first of all, is our attitude is very important. People don't realize, but how we think, speak, and feel, we actually create that in, in, our, in our environment, in our life. So the reason why people tend to feel like they're always going downhill is because they won't change their thoughts, their words, or their feelings on things or on life overall. So your attitude is very important. The better that you speak about yourself and others, the better that you think about yourself and others or things, and the better you feel in life, the better your life is overall. And it changes and ripples all of these good things in your life as the stronger you feel. Now, what I find interesting too is people talk about how, you know, um, you should always be in these like happier moods and positive moods and all of that. But in reality, in a neutral area, more things can come to you. So I'm not saying you have to be negative and I'm not saying you have to be like too happy, but if you're in a neutral plane for yourself and you're just feeling the vibe and you're feeling it out, it actually allows more to be created. The higher vibration that you get into, obviously it can create that aspect of happiness and fulfillment. But when you're in a neutral area, you're just kind of living it. You're in you're in a in a in a positive state of mind, but allowing life to happen, allowing life to flow. I always think of it as a car where you know we have the park, which is like the negative, where you're stopping everything. You have the drive, which is like your positive energy, you're going forward. But when you're neutral and just let it kind of take off and go, it literally allows you kind of just to kind of see the scenery, feel it out and feel so much better. So I always try to live by that. Yeah. And 
always try to connect with yourself in that way of everything's fine and I'm okay. Um, I love to talk about vibration. Vibration is all around us. Everything vibrates. Everything is energy, as we all know. Mm -hmm. And vibration has different levels. So if you think about it as a lined piece of paper, and each line is a vibration. Obviously, the upper vib upper lines are your higher vibrations. Your lower lines are your negative vibrations. And let's say you want to create something in your life, whether it's, you know, a new job, money, or um, a house, for example, if you want to get a house. All of those goals are positive goals. Those are those are things that you want to connect with. And a lot of a lot of Bob Proctor's teaching is around this too. And I love Bob. Um, but uh, when let's say that you're in a lower vibration. So if you take that line piece of paper and you put an X at the bottom, that's where you are. And then you put a circle at the top where your goal is. People talk about all the time how when you manifest, it's always a law of attraction. It's always going to come to you. It's always going to come to you. And in reality, that's not how it fully works. Mm -hmm. Yes, the law of attraction is there, but you have to, you have to, and you must connect with the law of vibration first. You have to vibrate to the level of whatever that goal is. And then that the law of attraction kicks in where it brings it to you. So for example, if you are like down here in the area of the, of the vibration and your goal is up here, you have to vibrate to the level of that. And then the law of attraction brings it to you. So it brings it over. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's hard for people to think about things in a way where they're like, oh, so just a law of attraction. This is just all it is. No, there's a lot of, there's a lot more laws that connect with that. There's, you know, many different universal laws mm -hmm. and a lot of that connects with our human self. That's the human luck. And um, one thing that I, I've worked on in the past and, you know, I still continue to try to work on the best I can, but we're human and things kind of step in and, you know, we deal with, we learn and we move on. Um, but there's a law that talks about that everyone has the opposite and, or it, everything has an opposite. So there's a inner world and an outer world. Mm -hmm. So the outer world is the world around you, whatever you have around you. The inner world is obviously you and your thoughts. So whatever you feel internally, you're creating externally. Yeah. So if you feel like you're a worthless person, for example, you will bring more people around you, more things around you that will continue to make you feel more worthless because right. you're vibrating at that, that feeling worthless. And if you want to vibrate higher, you must feel as if you're already higher. You must feel as if you're already at that high vibration. Mm -hmm. um, people have probably already seen or heard of The Secret, the book, The Secret, or the documentary, The Secret. Mm -hmm. And I find it very fascinating because they talk about a lot of this stuff as well. But um, it's a lot like how they explain where when people wake up in the morning and they stub their toe, well, are you going to focus on that stub toe all day and bring negative energy towards yourself and it's all just going to fall apart? Right. Or are you just going to go, I stub my toe. What are we going to do next? What are we right. going to move on? Are we just going to move on now? Um, so it is about that. Human luck is a very sensitive thing because we're human. We're, we're, it's, it, it, let's just, let's just say it, it sucks being human sometimes. It does. <laughs> it truly, it truly does. And we all get it, right? Like, oh, yeah. We all get it, but it's all about how we look at things in the perspective of things. You can sit there and dwell on all the negative, but what's truly negative about it, but the things that you're allowing it to be negative anyways, you know, anything can happen. Um, another one of Bob, Pro uh, Bob Proctor's teaching that I absolutely love too, is that we have the power to accept and reject anything that comes to us. And it's all based on our mentality and mind because our mind is the human aspect. Mm -hmm. And when you th when something happens, it all starts as energy above us. So set let's say there's a situation that occurred and it's all right here. Yeah. Well, once that situation goes in to the conscious side of your mind, that is where you have the power to accept and reject it. So okay. if you already feel like it's a negative thing, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, talk about that, you know, um, let's let's take for example the economy 
you know how many people nowadays just go, the economy sucks, the economy sucks. Well, I don't know what economy you have because I don't want to believe that. Yeah. I want, I'm going to reject that mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm just going to reject that. And uh, then once you, once that thought goes into the subconscious, yeah. the subconscious is what gives it the emotion and the emotion is what gives it the vibration and the vibration is what gives you the results. Yeah. It's a very powerful thing when you think that your mind's a very powerful tool because it is, it right. truly is. And so when you, whatever, whatever you um, want to reject, reject it. If you want to accept it, accept it and create the mentality from that and the vibration from that and move on and move forward into your life. You know, you don't have to always sit here and be a bump on the log and, you know, try to, uh, you know, soak in our own sorrows, so to speak. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people up that do. Right. And it's because they go, my life can't get better. My life can't get better. Well, yeah, it won't because you're not allowing it. Right. You're not allowing it to get better. Um, a lot of people come to me and they talk about money issues. Mm -hmm. Money is a very big thing, especially because of the world, how the, how the world may be to some people. And when it comes down to the money situation, people look at me and they go, Christopher, I'm broke. And I look at them and I go, well, if you think you're a broke bitch, you'll always be a broke bitch. <laughs> you know, that's, <laughs> that's how it is, right? That's, yeah. that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, money is a vibration. It's, it's, it's energy because everything's an energy. Yeah. But money's always at a higher vibration that if you want more, vibrate at that higher level. Connect right. at that higher level. Um, feel that success coming in for yourself. And know that it's real. Envision it. Envisioning is a very powerful tool too, because people don't understand. But when you when you're meditating and you're envisioning those goals that you have in life, and you're feeling as if it's real, that envision that that vision that you're holding projects into the reality, and it starts to create it and expand it around that. And you know, Stacey, I really, I really feel like you do that a lot. <laughs> I feel like you can sit there. I feel like you're natural at it. Like you sit there and you can envision what you want, and you're just pulling that energy in. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I mean? You're yeah, creating yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of you for that because you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't use that imagination or that creation, and then it becomes a reality for you. And I feel like you, you know, you're just you're just naturally born to do it for yourself. <laughs> and I'm very proud of you for that. And I really wish a lot of other people would see that, you know, um, I was studying into a lot of my spiritual stuff, obviously, because that's all I love to do is study. Yeah. And I remember reading um, a piece of uh, um, a piece of a book from uh, Sylvia Brown. Mm -hmm. And she was explaining how her grandmother uh, had to move into this old shack because there was just, there was something going on with the household or whatever. And she remembers walking into um, her grandma's little shack and her grandma's in there sprucing it up, putting, putting new curtains up and fixing up the table and decorating it all. And she said, I'm looking around, there's cracks in the wall and wallpaper falling off. And she looked at her grandma and she goes, why? why are you doing this? Like, it's, it's a crappy home for you right now. And she said, well, you have to make a heaven out of your hell. You mm -hmm. have to create what you want. Yeah. And ever since I heard that at a young age, I fully believe that mm -hmm. you have to create a heaven out of your hell. Yeah. And if you don't like what's in your life right now, it's only temporary. You know, yeah. if you have a broken down house, decorate it fix it up and say i'm imagining this as a damn mansion mm -hmm. i want a mansion yeah and as you envision this mansion you feel like you're already living in this mansion you will eventually have a mansion right you right. will get there and um same thing with live with land i want to manifest and i i already have it on my list of goals that i want to do um, but within a couple of years, I'm manifesting a little cottage. I want just a little, a little old cottage built in the 1800s. Yeah. I, that's really what I want. And I don't care if the floors creak. I want it, you know, like, mm -hmm. and I'm envisioning like all the old wood and the old smell and, you know, all the, um, 
the decorations that I'll have up. And I just want it to be like a little summer home, you know, yeah. just a little place to go away. And I'm envisioning that. I already feel as if it's there. I already, I already know it's there. Yeah. And I'm creating it. It's already happening, you know? Right. Um, and that's another thing that I like to discuss with people too, if they want to change and transform their lives is act as if it already happened. It has already happened. You have to, even writing it out on a piece of paper and stating that I'm so happy and grateful now that, and then you explain what it is as if it already happened and you yeah. focus on that, it creates it because it's already there. It already feels so real to you. Yeah. And, you know, it creates all of that. Now, what I do like to discuss with people too, because a lot of people feel bad when they when they think in negative ways because, you know, let's, for example, I've had people say, well, I feel like I killed my grandmother because she was stressing me out and I was thinking it'd just be better if she just passed already because she's sick and I just can't take care of her. I'm stressed or whatever. And in reality, no, you didn't because right. when you manifest, you can't create that. That's just negative. And you know, God wouldn't let that happen. Right. You know, it was just their time. It was their ending. But when you connect with God and you connect with the laws and all that stuff in a positive way, God's like, okay, I can do that because it's positive. Yeah. I can do that because it's positive, but he won't allow negative things to happen, you know, right. just because you feel that way. So never feel like what you think is really, well, what, when you think positive, it will happen. When you think in a negative way, just because you're thinking it doesn't mean you created that. Right. You're creating other, you're creating other stumbles possibly. You know, for example, you can't kill someone with your thoughts, Right. but if you create more chaos for you, you'll create, create more chaos for you. Yeah. Um, the energy always, always clicks and comes back. You know, it always mm -hmm. happens. And um, again, with Bob Proctor, I love his quote. You are your own problem and you are your own solution because truly you are. Yeah. Whatever you create in your life, whatever's in front of you right now, and you're looking at it, you created that. You yeah. made all that happen. And it's not saying you have to do self-blame because we don't want that. We don't want self-blame. We don't want anyone um, doubting themselves or being angry at themselves. But you have to realize that if you truly wanted to change, you have to do it. No one else. Right. If you're not, if you're not happy in your marriage, for example, and you want more happiness in your, in your marriage, you know, um, you have to do things to make it more happy, you know, yeah. communicate more if you need to, um, and, uh, go on dates if you need to, but sometimes it just doesn't work out like that. But yeah, you know, if you want things to change, you can make a change Right. And no one else can do it for you. You can't just sit there going, well, I want a whole brand new car. <laughs> we'll get off your ass and go get a brand new car. <laughs> no one's going to bring it and hand it to you. Exactly. You know? Um, and human luck too, even though it's 33.3% .3 of your manifesting, if you break it down, it's, um, 95% thought 5% strategy. Mm. So when you are thinking 90, 95% of the time, how real it is, when you're feeling it, how real it is, when you're speaking, how real it is 95% of the time, and you're working towards it, just that 5% the rest just falls into place. The rest just clicks, you know, um, and it all just creates and has it to happen. Yeah. And I enjoy it. I enjoy, I, I enjoy toot my own horn when I sit there going, I manifested that. I yeah. feel good about that. You know, um, I created that and uh, making it all happen for yourself. The, the thing is too, is people all the time talk about, um, God is the creator. God will create for you. God will do. No, it's not. I believe in God 100%. I, I love talking about God and we can yeah. have a you know conversation on that one day. Mm -hmm. But what I like to talk about with the whole God thing is that we're part of him. We yeah. have his spiritual DNA in our spiritual DNA. We're, yeah. his, we're his children, so to speak, like everyone talks about. Right. So since we're part of the creator, we are also the creator. Mm -hmm. We connect with that. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying we're God, but we're part of him. 
Yeah. And since we are part of him, we have that ability to create the life that we truly want. Right. Um, I always love to talk about Dolly Parton too. I don't know if you're a big fan of Dolly. I'm a I big do. fan of Dolly. I do. I like her. You I do? like her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. love Dolly. Um, but Dolly Parton, obviously she came from a very, um, you know, it was a poor home, a lot of siblings, you mm-hmm. know, um, she came from a big family and she talks about her life and she's a successful person. Yeah. And why is she a successful person? Well, if you actually study into her stuff, read her books, you know, things like that. She talks about as a child, how she imagined a lot of things. She used her imagination. And that is a very big thing to do because you're envisioning. And when she imagined this, and this is why I wish that people wouldn't take imagination from children because they deserve to use that imagination. But when you're imagining things and you're feeling it, you're speaking it and you're seeing it, you're creating it. So she became successful because she was determined she used that 95% thought Mm -hmm. and she used the 5% strategy and she connected with so much in her life that she grew and expanded and she continued to be successful. And for crying out loud to this day, she still does. Yeah. She, she still thinks of these crazy things and she goes, let's do it. You yeah. Know? And, mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't care how crazy it is in your, how, how crazy you may think it may be. Yeah. Do it. Right. Just do it. And it creates more for you. And um, what I really love is how she, you know, she does multiple, multiple things. She's not just a singer for crying out loud. She does multiple things yes um and it's because she'll just wake up with an idea and she goes let's do it right let's do it um and just allowing yourself to just let life happen be right. there the one thing too is that people all the time talk about why well, i need the money to get there no you just need to think about what it is mm-hmm. think about what you can do around that area right and the money will just come to you exactly if you need it that much it will show up yeah, it will be there. Um, so creating yourself in that area of being human, you know, allow that human luck to connect, just breathe through things, let life be, let life happen and envision life that you want. Yeah. And when you're envisioning too, um, we talk about uh, a lot of th- of times too with paradigms and yeah, paradigms are our bad habits we're mm-hmm. programmed with so we're programmed through spirituality we have a spiritual program right we also have a physical program which is the dna from our mom and dad of why we look the way we do and you know um, our health and things like that yeah but then we also have the paradigms which are programs through childhood mm-hmm. so whatever you were taught as a child and to be honest statistically you are very sensitive from the ages of zero to five and that's when you're absorbing the most Mm -hmm. you know and when you're absorbing the most through that time um those are what creates those paradigms and obviously you're still getting more paradigms throughout your life but those are bad habits that we're programmed with through anything and um how bob explains is if, if you if you think back to like oh, I like this kind of meal because my grandma liked this kind of meal. Well, if you if you kind of go back, someone genetically, you know, your great, 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 great grandfather could have liked it. And yeah. it was just programmed throughout the family. Right. And that is the programming through, um, through how we were developed as we age. And um, there's multiple different types of paradigms that people have. And when you validate that you have a paradigm somewhere, uh, you do the opposite what the paradigm says and you create a new um, habit and it doesn't get rid of the paradigm, which is sad, <laughs> you know, but when you get the new programming that can overtop that paradigm. And so then the paradigms kind of just shoved down and yeah. it's just replaced, which makes it a lot easier too. Um and uh, you grow and expand in many different ways by validating your thoughts on the paradigms, the connection with paradigms. 
And once you connect with that and you change that habit and you focus on the good and you continue with the good and you feel it and you speak it, it's just going to come. It's yeah. just going to come. And I, and I do it to my family all the time. They'll start talking about something. I'm just like, can we reward, can we just reward that? Yeah. You know, can we, can we not use that word and replace it with something else or, right. you know, because we're not creating more of that. Right. And I try to teach my kids that too. You know, my, my kid, I have three children. I adopted three children. I love them dearly. Pains in the asses. But, I love <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, when it comes down to it, I tell them all the time, you can change it. You yes. can develop it. You can create mm -hmm. and you can make your life however you want it to be. Definitely. And bringing in with that, the past as well, because a lot of people focus on the past. Oh, yeah. A, you know, we have people that dabble too much into that. Mm -hmm. And I um, had a habit with that a little bit here and there with yeah. certain things. Uh, and what I was told from uh, of my friend Tara, who I, I love dearly, she was actually taught by Bob Proctor. And Bob Proctor told her the same thing. But when you talk about your past, are you going to hold on to that or are you going to rewrite it? Yeah, I like that. You know, yeah, and I that hit me. Like, I want to rewrite it. I want to rewrite my life. Why am yeah. I holding on to that? Exactly. You know, I may not be able to change it, but I don't want to carry it for the rest of my damn life. I want to yeah. be able to be happy and grow yeah. and expand. And working with your human luck in that aspect of realizing that you need to let go that you need to be more positive, that you need to speak, hear, uh, speak, feel, and think of these things in a positive way, your life will become easier. So oh. much easier because oh. you're growing that 33.3, mm -hmm. you know, and you start to realize what your life can be and what you want it to be. And right. if you think about it too, if you think about your past right now, and then you think about what you have in front of you right now, you can tell with most people, that they've either held on to too much and that's why their life's the way it is or they've grown and became more successful because they deserve that. And right. because we all deserve that. Yeah. 100%. yeah I, love, it. I yeah. love how you talk about how rewriting your past because so many people hold on to their past yeah. and they dwell on the past and you can see it. You could just see when, even when you meet them, I could feel their wall. I could feel, I could feel the, the pain, you know, I don't, I don't even have to talk to them. I could just feel it, you know, yeah. and you know, it's a terrible way to live. It's a terrible way to have to go through life, you know, and to be able to just, you know, think about rewriting your past. Is there any suggestions that, you know, that could make it easier? Cause some people just don't, they just, they hold on to it and they just don't know how to let go. Um, there's a few suggestions with that is, I like to talk to God about it. I like to release it to God and just mm -hmm. say whatever I'm holding on to from this life or even past lives that no longer serve me, I release to you and I no longer want. Yeah. And so I always like to do that. Um, I can't remember the exact word for it, but there's a word for it, but where you can, you can uh, write it all out on paper and you can mm -hmm. burn it and send it out. Or yes. you, you know, do you do that? Yeah, I've done that. I've done that. Yeah. I love that too. I love to like, if I, if I'm like, ah, you know, I talked to God too much. Let me give him a break, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, I'll write it out and I'll just, I'll burn it. Or, you know, you can rip it up and um, put it down the drain somewhere and like flush it down the toilet, let it go release. Um, uh, energy therapy will help too. So if you need like integrated energy therapy or um, Reiki will help too. Um, meditation, there's meditations to release the past and things like that, yeah. um, that may help. Uh, so there's numerous things that you can do. You know, it's really sad though, because, you know, you and I as these spiritual people and we, I mean, obviously you're an advisor, you know, you, you probably tell people certain things too, <laughs> yeah. you know, but um, when it comes down to it, we can, we can sit there until we're blue in the face, but people don't go out and looking for those things. They don't go, Oh, it's that simple. They look for the hard stuff, which I can't, I don't know why people make it so hard. You know, yeah. there's some people that they'll go, Oh, you need to start a, a bomb fire and dance underneath the full moon and throw your worries into the fire. 
why? Yeah. Why are we doing all that? You know, it's fun. Go ahead and do it if yeah. that makes you happy. But why? Just write it out. Burn the damn paper. Talk exactly. to God. You can even talk to a loved one that's on the other side. I like to do that all the time. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. If there's, there's times where I'm like, to my spirit guide, Anna, I go, Anna, can you get my grandfather for me? Because I need to have a conversation. You know, mm-hmm. I, I need to talk to him. And it's funny because there's, there's times <laughs> I'll be like, she'll say, she'll say, well, I can't get him right now. He's busy. Mm-hmm. I go doing what he's dead. What do you, what, what is he doing? <laughs> you know, what, what, <laughs> what is there over there to do? But there's a, apparently a lot. People still work. There's jobs and there's studying and all that stuff. Um, but when he does show up, I'll have a quick conversation with him about how I feel. Yeah. You know, I, I ask him what he thinks I can do to change it or to feel better. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's just multiple things you can do. Multiple. Yeah. And I feel like they also sometimes just pop up. You know, like I get little signs, you know, that they're here, yeah. you know, yeah. and uh, even, you know, it was a couple of days ago, my aunt, all her Facebook information just popped onto my page. So to me, that was just her saying, I'm here, you know, it was yeah. just like, there was no reason for all that information to be popped up, you know, you yeah. know, no one's used her account in a very long time, but you know, all yeah. her information about what was going on was all on my page, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, that was her just saying, I'm in your presence, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, at that time, people could just release to the, you know, they're, they're saying, I'm here to help you, you know, yeah. and that's what people have to be open to. They have to look for the signs, I think, you know, and they have to really be, be open to it. And, you know, when, when you go, when you talk about going to different vibrations for people who don't, I understand what you're talking about, but if you mm-hmm. want to make it really simple, like if a person's here and they need to be here, you know, what are some simple steps or simple exercises they could do to be able to higher their vibration? So um, I always love to explain it like Peter Pan. Mm-hmm. So because people, people don't realize, even obviously when you have, when you, when you watch the movie Peter Pan or have read the books and whatnot, um, the fairy dust, when they sprinkle it on you, you have to have happy thoughts that lift you into the air, you know, yeah. or, you know, you, if you have negative thoughts, you can't fly. Yeah. And that's exactly what the higher vibration is. You have to have happy thoughts that lift you up mm-hmm. and you have to feel happy to lift you up. You have to speak happy to lift you up. It's when you're in those negative vibrations, where the hell are you going? Yeah. Where you can't go anywhere. So I always like to discuss it like Peter Pan, happy thoughts. And what, what, what's the, the line? The line's like, um, sprinkle a little fairy dust and think happy thoughts and it just lifts you into the air or something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. And that's truly, that's truly what it is. That's truly what happens. Um, I'm not saying you can't, I mean, you, obviously we have gravity and it's a bummer that there is no fairy dust. We could just toss around here and there, but yeah. um, you know, we, we obviously can think positively and that's what helps heighten the vibration. Yeah. So everything is a vibration. Everything that you do is a vibration. Even, you know, um, the things around you and like decoration stuff vibrate. People talk about quartz and crystals. They have vibration. And sometimes you need to wash them because they absorb your vibration and you should wash them every so often. Um, But they have a vibration. So that's the same thing. You want a more positive vibration, clear your shit and step up the game, move on, mm-hmm. move forward, think positively, feel it and speak it. And it comes into existence. You know, I always like to say, fake it till you make it, mm-hmm. you know, in reality, it's all based on how we act. This yeah. is, I always like to tell people too, this is a whole movie you're in. You're the damn star of this movie. Right. And I like to think of it as your spirit guide and your loved ones on the back of the stage with those microphones, like telling us like, oh, you need to go here and do this and blah, blah, blah. You know, that's how it is. And since you're the star of the movie, do what you need to do. You create it. You are what you're to do. So when you think more positive and stuff, it just creates that roadmap of more positive things that play out in this movie for you. Yeah. You know, and you're creating more of whatever your movie's about to be, you yeah. know, if you want your movie to be a, a horror film, <laughs> keep those low vibrations, you know, if you yeah. if uh-huh. that's really what you are, but if you want it to be, you know, a uh, inspirational tale on everything that you've done, then think more positively, bring it up. 
Yeah. You know, it's, it's just how it is. We all, we all vibrate and we have to change those vibrations. Yeah. And I think one thing too, is like, even I, I sometimes do it myself and I have to try to stop myself when I do it, you become over analytical too. And like, even when you're higher in your vibrations, sometimes things occur in your life and you try to analyze it. Like why, why? And then I think that pulls you down and drains you, you know, and it, it lowers your vibration, I think. Yes. And you're exactly right. But that's the paradigm. So paradigms will step in and say, you were comfortable down here. Come back, come back. And so when you're doing good, a paradigm will step into the back of your head and making you think, am I doing this right? Am I, am I supposed to do this? Or maybe I'm doing it wrong. Or, and it lowers it or it pushes you back down to that low vibration. And you have to pretty much just say, screw you, paradigm. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't want it. I don't, I, I'm going this way. You're not holding yeah. me back and you have to get through it. Yeah. Paradigms can show up in anything, people, places, and things. Even with electronics, paradigms can step in saying, you know, oh, you're trying to be more successful. We don't want that. Let me mess with your electronic by screwing up your, your, your computer for a day. Or, yeah. you know, we're not, we're not going to send that email out. That's not going to happen. You know, right. so it can step in anywhere. And where do these paradigms come from? Is it just just the the negative DNA that's that's occurred throughout the centuries of our lifetime that are related, you know, or is it is it is it some type of negative energy, maybe spirits in between, or like where do these paradigms come from? So they 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 come from the habits that you're you're pretty much programmed with. So if you've seen your mother not so successful, and then and your father not so successful, and you want to be a successful person. When you start that path of being successful in your head, that paradigm is going to step in going, wait, your mom and dad weren't like that. And you were comfortable back where you were. You can't be successful because that's changing something. Right. And that's where people have like the fears of success and things like that, yeah. because it's all based on those paradigms. So you need to realize, oh, this negative thoughts popping in right now. I'm going to validate it's there, but I'm going to do the opposite of what I'm thinking about doing. Because mm -hmm. if I do what, it, what it's telling me to do, right. I'm going to fail. I'm going to yeah. fall backwards. Um, for example, too, let's say your mother had a money paradigm mm -hmm. where she constantly is like, oh, my God, I can't, I can't use this money because I'm going to go broke if I use this money. You know, blah. And, and you watch that as a child, then you are programmed with that money paradigm. Mm -hmm. And then when you get older, you might not invest in something because um you know you're terrified to use that money towards it yeah but in reality you could make millions by investing into that yeah you know and once you take that once you take and say you know screw you paradigm yeah and you throw that extra income into something else a, a business for example mm -hmm. and it starts taking off and you keep on pushing you'll start to see so much so much success come in yeah Makes sense. Makes sense. So if you had to take like three takeaways or you wanted to emphasize on some important aspects that we talked about today, like what are some things that you feel we need to emphasize? Or and even if you want to include some exercises that people could start doing at home, whatever you think is important, what are some things you'd like to emphasize right now? Uh, one, make sure you change your attitude. You, It's all about what you speak, feel and think about. So if you want positive things, change the attitude. Um, two, don't think that Prince Charming is gonna change anything for you. No man, woman or whatever is gonna come in a suit of armor and change your life for you. Yeah. You have to do it. You right. have to do that. Um, and three, uh, allow yourself to allow life. It just has to be, you know, it's that, it's that 95% thought and 5% strategy. Allow yourself to envision and think about what you want. And then the, the other 5% the other just kind of strategize on where you want or how you want things to change or you step into making them change, sorry. Right. Um, so you have to like, uh, if it's about getting a job to start off with something, go get that job to start off right. with something yeah. and just make those little things happen. That's amazing. I love this. And where can people find you? You can visit my website at ChristopherStilson.com. Um, I have a Facebook at Psychic Christopher Stilson. 
um, the Instagram, which is Chris Rostelson official. Um, and then I think all the rest of our should be on there on Facebook and stuff too. So I don't really have much social media directly, but I try to be up on what I am up on. And what services do you have like that you offer? Like you mentioned what you do, but on your website, like what different types of services can do that you have and they, they can book and stuff like that. So um, I help people connect with your three lux. So I, I never heard of anyone else connecting with all three of them. There probably is people out that will. Um, but for example, with your heaven luck, which is 33.3% of your manifesting, I can help you um, connect with your loved ones, your chart on their side to help guide you and connect to what you can do better in life and things like that. I can help with learning some spiritual ways of doing that as well. So I do psychic medium readings. Um, I do transformational coaching, which is the human luck. And we tap into, you know, you viewing a goal and how you can create that goal just by doing and creating and changing your attitude and so yeah. on and so forth. Um, and you can also work with human luck with your energy uh, therapy. So I do energy therapy, which is a um, kind of like a combination of Reiki and integrated energy therapy. Um, so I do that. And then I do help people with their earth luck. Earth luck is the feng shui. So um, your environment is what really kind of creates what you want in your life and yeah. how you want things in your life. I love it. I love it. Now, you also co-authored a book you were telling me about. Yes. So I do have a book um, that is called Global Conscious Entrepreneurs. It is but with Marie Diamond, the Marie Diamond from The Secret. She's a feng shui master and a law of attraction master. Um, so that is on, available on Amazon. It's called Global Conscious Entrepreneurs. Um, and then I also have my own book out, which is um, Taking It Back, A Simple Guide to Transform Your Life. And it is actually a workbook. So it helps you tap into those three locks in small um, portions. And then obviously, if you want to connect further, you can connect with me and there will be some other opportunities of other books that may come out with me in it and or doing myself that you can see available in the future. I love it. And where can people find your books? Um, on Amazon. So you can go on Amazon um, and you can just look up the Global Conscious Entrepreneurs. There's two books out or three books out that's Global Conscious Entrepreneurs. The first book, which is Gold and White, that is the one that I wrote with Marie. I do suggest getting getting all of them because they have so many amazing stories in them. Um, and it, they're just absolutely beautiful. And then the Taking It Back, A Simple Guide to Start Transforming Your Life, um, that is also on Amazon. And that is a royal blue book with uh, gold diamond and gold wording. Oh, I love it. This has been amazing. Oh my, you know, I love when you come on the show because you provide such valuable information. And, you know, I, I hope that people, you know, well, one, spiritual people will definitely learn and enhance their spirituality with you. But I hope also people that are a little skeptic really, really learn to really open their mind and maybe, you know, take a chance into open themselves to the spiritual world because so many beautiful things happen when you open yourself up to the spiritual world. Almost definitely. And, you know, it's funny that you bring up skeptic because I call myself a skeptic medium <laughs> and people laugh at it. They're like, what do you mean? You're, you do it all the time. And I go, if I don't see, hear, feel, or deal with it, I don't believe in it. And I have to study into it or talk to my spirit guide about it because I need that guidance. I'm not one that just says, oh, this person told me this, it must be true. Right. I need to make sure it's true. And it took me so long to even believe that I talked to dead people. <laughs> it did. A while. Wow. Well, that's amazing. That is so amazing. Oh my God, this has been great. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I can't wait to see you next time. And Christopher will be back and we will be talking about some more topics. And thank you so much for all this valuable information. You've been a whirlwind of, of information. And I always feel very positive when I leave this show. Like you have such positive energy. Every time I talk to you, I feel like I can clean the house five times over because you just like, <laughs> <laughs> you pour me in with positive energy. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it too. It's either you're feeling my positive energy or you must be feeling my OCD because that's exactly what I feel like doing half the time. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh gosh that's so funny well everybody thank you so much for listening to us and thank you so much for listening to christopher and everything that he has to tell you about human luck and everyone tap into his other podcast he's done a bunch of podcasts with us so far and listen to them learn and check out his books and you will really learn from his intuition his insights and his valuable information thank you so much christopher thank you